Monday. Today's Monday. I don't know if I'm going to be posting on Monday, but today's Monday. I uh, had a great weekend. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about motivating you. I mean, we do a lot of Monday motivationals, but also I wanted to talk about how we interact as a community. Um, I suggested a, about two weeks ago about doing a critiquing. And um, critiquing is takes a little bit of bravery in the public arena. Um, it takes a, a lot of bravery in the public arena to put your own artwork out there. So um, I'm very um, proud of this young lady that um, sent me some work to critique. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the woman that I am going to be critiquing today. I'm going to tell you her story and then I'm going to close it out and we're going to talk about the work. Um, first of all, Carrie um, is really interesting. She's a very uh, great, uh, a lovely artist, very passionate about doing her artwork and representing her artwork. Uh, she has been published and is in the process of just getting out there again and doing it again. As we know as artists, you know, it's an up and down journey. Um, sometimes you're high, sometimes you're low, sometimes you're doing gangbusters and sometimes you're like, what happened? Crickets, you know? Um, so let me just tell you the little story about Carrie. Uh, I met her about a couple months ago at an art uh, get together and uh, kind of a networking with artists. And um, I, I, she's interesting and she contacted me later and we were talking about what I do and, um, and she, she's been following me and she liked the idea of doing a, me critiquing her work. So let me tell you about her. Okay, so just going through her regular life, um, she met somebody and fell in love in 2009. This was, she considered her soulmate, somebody she just was, passionately in love with and um, she started painting and, and just really expressing herself through her painting. I, I got a little recognized and then the relationship broke up in 2012. Um, and she just stopped painting, like she completely stopped. Uh, not really sure why she stopped, but maybe uh, it's a projective thing, which we'll talk about in a minute. I think, um, when, uh, artists mostly work through their emotions, through their heart, uh, through their uh, how they sense things. And um, she, to protect herself from the emotions she was feeling, she maybe just shut, she had to stop that. She had to shut that down. Um, in 2017, she started back with this person again and again, picked up the paintbrush, started painting again. So now she's seeing, okay, this is related. Um, the relationship ended again and she stopped again. And she said, maybe I'm just impractical. Maybe I'm just I'm an illogical, impractical individual. So she went out and got a job. And she put all of her uh, passion into the job. She worked very hard, maybe too hard, and she got fired. Why? We don't know. Um, she said it was interesting. It wasn't such a terrible thing. She said it was mostly, I wanna read what she said. She said, as she's walking back to her car, she said, well, obviously the universe or God is trying to tell me something. So she says, so now I paint for my muse, I paint for my love, I paint for my God, and I paint for the universe. That's a very deep statement, and I like that she made that statement because she then said, it's for me. It's for me to express myself out to the rest of the world, and that is very profound. That was a, that was a moment for her. Sometimes it takes a shake-up like um, that. So let me just look at Carrie's work really quickly, and then I'm gonna tell you some more things about Carrie towards the end. The first piece I'm showing you is a, one of my favorite pieces that she did that is a sketch and maybe it's a sketch of her maybe it's a sketch of somebody else i don't really know but what's interesting about the sketch is it's in a box and although it's in a box oddly the top of her head is outside of the box now if that was unintentional or if that was subliminal i don't know if she realizes that that crown chakra was then connecting to the universe even though she was in this containment situation maybe stuck in a way, confined in a way, she still had her heart up into the universe. And that's a very profound piece of artwork. I love that. Um, so I wanted to show you that one. That's really interesting. Another one that I absolutely love, the next one is obviously a heart. There's a heart in there. And what's amazing about the heart, and this is amazing about her story, is that it just, it, it, it leaves the heart and it just goes out. 
and it goes beyond the canvas itself and it keeps going and it keeps going and um, that's a very profound piece of artwork um, that's what I see in that um, I really like that piece of artwork uh, it's very um, it, emanate, it emanates love it uh, it's showing love out it's 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 using red. A lot of people think that the color red is kind of a, an aggressive color. Let's, let's say that that's what people will call it. Um, I like red, I use red a lot in my work and I don't think it's aggressive in any way. I use red because I love the color red and red signifies love to me. So that is obviously her correlation. So when you talk about how to interpret dreams or how to interpret artwork or how to interpret, you really need to know the artist you really need to know uh, what red means to that person in their dreams or in that person in their artwork. You can't really say, oh, well, an elephant sitting on me in my dream meant that I was being restrained. Maybe the person loves elephants. I don't know. I'm just saying, for me, I find it interesting how people relate to the color red. I think that she loves the color red, and I think she is that way pushing out her love into the universe. That's a beautiful piece. The next piece is also an interesting piece. Same thing, lots of red, but she's also popped that blue in there. It's almost like it's balancing out. It's like she's balancing out. So although to me this is a little manic in the sense that there's lots of thoughts, lots of things going on in the piece, um, it's, ba it's beautifully balanced actually. Uh, by the blues and greens with the oranges and reds and yellows. So the warms and the colds are beautifully balanced. So it's an interesting piece. Also goes beyond the borders of the canvas itself. So it's pushing out. It's pushing out. And I, I like that. Um, I'll, I'll talk about the colors in, in a little bit. The next piece I love, um, this is interesting because interestingly, although it's done on paper, she's confined. She's confining herself into this shape, but the movement within the shape is soft. And although there's little points, it's not like they're making points of an end structure. They're making points to go on to the next thing. So that shows me that she's moving through her process and she's keeping it to herself. She's keeping it in her own mind. That's what she's doing. And there might be little spiky things outside and maybe that's her prickly personality to people. Maybe people aren't reading the fact that she's internally working out this information. Very interesting piece of artwork. I'm not a therapist, I'm not a shrink. I don't know what it means. But as a person that's just looking at it, um, that's what I see. I would, I would frame this and mat this in such a way that I might actually float that piece of paper just almost exactly the way that it is away from a, um, a board and then frame it uh, in a box. Because I like the fact that it, it's, it's rougher and I like the fact that it's literally creating a very tidy ending border. Very interesting piece. Uh, it's fluid. It's got great fluidity throughout the piece. Again, beautiful balance of color. She's working color throughout the whole piece. This takes a lot of thought. But I like the fact that the thoughts are fluid and they're moving smoothly, not stops. There's no stop other than she's not allowing it to be outside of herself. In other words, in this piece, all that fluid thought and all that fluid um, working out of issues is being kept inside of her. She's not sharing that with the rest of the world. And maybe the things that come out in the rest of the world might have little spiky points from time to time. Maybe those things are hurting or spiking or barking at somebody, but she in her, inside of herself is working out these things. She's working it through. I love that piece. Um, you know, I want to talk about other fine artists so that you understand something. Um, you know, Kandinsky, uh, this piece here with Kandinsky also uses colors. He uses it in a more um, also cool and, and, and warm and cool tones, balancing each other out, but also bright colors. Um, then I have a Jackson Pollock piece. Um, and you can see this is also a heavy, heavy duty thinking piece. Um, lots of movement of thought. This is this is a staccato concept of thought. Um, and the next piece I want to show you is Gino Savatini. Savatini, and um, this is structural. It goes beyond the canvas, but it is structural. Um, sharp points, edgy, sharp thought. A very thoughtful piece. And then the last one is Al Held, and this is also primary colors. So the reason I'm talking about primary colors is because this is what Carrie uses. She uses a lot of her primary colors. 
There could be a concept of muting down the colors, but maybe that would be muting down Carrie's thought process. Maybe she needs to work in primary colors because she needs to keep it real. She needs to keep it tight. She doesn't want to work. She doesn't want to uh, mute her thoughts. She wants her thoughts to be sharp. Um, she's probably also using what's being given to her. So remember, um, you know, another fact I'm going to tell you about Carrie right now is that Carrie is homeless. And so all of these pieces of work that she creates are wherever she can create them. And I give her a lot of credit. So when you want to be motivated out there in the real world, um, think about the Carries out there that are out there and they're still just trying to create artwork. She creates artwork. These other fine artists in the world that become famous and infamous um, is often, other than uh, Van Gogh, often um, um, an accident of connections and they are um, powerful men that have been in their business and they make their connections and they they tell their story out there in the world and people buy their story you know Carrie's working through her story and her pieces of artwork and uh, I just I think it's really important for you to understand that an artist needs to express themselves so when you think you're having a bad day other people have a bad day too and some people even though they're having a bad day are still creating artwork Another point that's very important about Carrie that motivates me on a daily basis is that her sister uh, died several years ago. She committed suicide. And this is suicide uh, month, prevention month. And um, this motivates Carrie. Uh, these thoughts, these things are, these, these stresses, these emotional pressures, um, these are things that are creating her thought process. And what's through all of it that amazes me is that she still works through love. She still is loving her work. She loves to show love to the rest of the world. She loves to um, put that out to you. Um, so I give her a lot of credit. Um, a lot of people are fortunate enough to buy the latest equipment, paints, pastels, canvases, you name it. They're, they have the, uh, the funds to afford these things, but some people don't. So they still need to create it. They still need to tell their story, and I love that. So I just want to say, you know, don't let anything slow you down. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't create what you need to create. I want you to go out there today. Think about a thoughtful process. What is in your heart to put out there? Even if it's anger, put it on a piece of paper because I got to tell you, people will buy that. People love to say, oh, that was a bad day. Oh, I've... And then they relate to that when they see it on a wall in a gallery or they see it on a wall in a store. They see it on your website. They say, something about that piece I relate to so much because I'm having a frustrating time right now. And then you look at that piece years later, that frustrating, because I had a piece of artwork in my living room for years, that frustrating moment that you got out of and you look at it and you say, yep, I was there that one time, but now I'm not there anymore. So um, I just want to motivate you with this wonderful story of this great woman and um you know check out she's on youtube also um i'm not sure if she has a website but she's on youtube and i'll post the information down below please share this uh story um like and subscribe for more videos thanks for watching